Today we are taking a look at the Sony FS5. This is a camera from 2015 and it was a really popular camera a while back. However, because technology has moved on, people upgraded to newer cameras. You can definitely pick them up for a lot cheaper than they were a while back. And there are a few things you definitely need to know about this camera before buying it. The build of this camera is really good. I really like it and it is very modular. So you can remove the top handle, the side handle and the buttons on the side are amazing. You can quickly adjust settings on it and it also allows you to get a small or a large battery on the back. I really like the side grip, it feels comfortable. However, it is a bit heavy after using it for a while. And the battery life of this camera is really good. It's really nice when you shoot for an hour, then after shooting you can still see you have like 70% left. It's really amazing in my opinion. Also for the ports you have the HDMI, the SDI, two XLR ports for great audio. A multi-interface shoe on the top handle. Keep in mind it's only here and when you remove the top handle there isn't a multi-interface shoe on here. And you have a lot of manual controls, it's amazing. So if you want to adjust the ND filters, you can use these dials or you can adjust the variable or put it on automatic ND and then it will automatically use the ND filter. And that is amazing. And if you want to, you can quickly adjust the audio settings right here. The screen is not the best. It can't go extremely bright and it doesn't look extremely accurate. It is a bit small, so you might want to use an external monitor but the internal one is fine if you just quickly need to look at it. The menu system isn't the best. I actually got used to it pretty quickly uh, because I am used to other Sony menu systems. But it feels like the categories aren't that well. So everything is in one place and then you need to scroll through it to find something and that can take a while. It has a really good slow motion feature. It can go up to 960 FPS. However, the quality is pretty poor in 960 and 480 FPS. However, before you buy this camera, there are a few things you need to consider. This camera definitely has a few things that I don't like about this. The first one is the XAVC codec. This is XAVC and not XAVC-S. This means that the files will be saved in .mxf files, which aren't compatible with all video editing software. The second thing is that it doesn't have an internal microphone. There is a microphone on the top handle. However, if you disconnect the top handle, there won't be any sound recorded and there is no three and a half millimeter jack on the body so no internal audio no multi interface shoe no 3.5 millimeter jack however you can still use this xlr port another thing that is a bit of an issue for me is the autofocus it can be really slow and it doesn't work that fast and the older sony a5100 has better autofocus than this one also it is 0.8 kilos which doesn't sound like a lot but that is the body only so if you attach a pretty big battery a side handle the top handle a small lens then it will definitely get heavier and you need to get used to it if you aren't used to heavy cameras but because of its big size you can definitely get a nice handheld look should you buy one in 2023 I think it really depends on who you are. You are probably better off buying a newer mirrorless camera because of the much better autofocus and internal microphones. However, the ND filter is something that is really nice and unique to this camera. There aren't a lot of other cameras with a variable ND filter. I also like the XLR inputs. It has all the manual controls. It has a monitor that you can easily adjust. So it definitely has features that some newer cameras don't have. However, it is definitely starting to show its age in some things. The low light isn't the best and the focus is definitely not good. But the menu controls, the XLR ports, the built-in ND filter, the option for large batteries, the ability to adjust the monitor at different points, those are features that you don't see on a lot of mirrorless cameras. It has some great features that you don't see in a lot of other cameras. What do you think of this camera? Let me know in the comments down below and thank you so much for watching.